Praise the Lord. We are continuing our study in the book of Ezekiel. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 42. I'm going to read verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 42 and verse 1. Then he brought me out into the outer court, the way toward the north, and he brought me to the chamber, which was the separate area opposite the building toward the north. So what chapter 42 describes is the chambers for the priests. And with chapter 42, the description and the measurement of the temple comes to an end. Next week, God willing, when we go to chapter 43, you will find the glory of the Lord entering the temple. Therefore, we need to understand why all these dimensions Ezekiel gives in the temple. We are going to look at it today primarily on Ezekiel. And as we go for a few weeks, we are going to cover straight from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and also to Daniel and try to find out what is the message God is conveying. In chapter 42, next week, when we come, God says in all clarity what the message of the temple is. We are going to focus on that. So having said that, let's have a word of prayer before we go into and look at the pictures of the temple. Loving Heavenly Father, we say thank you to you for the time you have given to us to study the book of Ezekiel. As we look into chapter 42, we have been looking at the temple design which you have given to Ezekiel. Lord, it is mind-boggling. All the dimensions and everything you have given to us. Help us to understand. Understand in the context in which you have spoken to them and the reason for which you have mentioned as we are going to look at it next week. We may understand it. And also, Lord, as the New Testament very clearly says, you are the temple of the living God. Let us and help us to understand all these concepts. Having placed everything at the throne of grace, fully believing he will continue to speak to each one of us through your spirit. We offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'm going to show them my screen in which you're going to see the various temples comparisons. You can see that temple size and comparisons. Let us start with the tabernacle. Can you see the tabernacle here? So let me show you. The, this is the, uh, can you see the tabernacle? Let me get my cursor correct. Ah, I got a hand. This is a tabernacle. You remember Moses built it? Who gave the design of the tabernacle? Ask yourself the question. God gave every detail of this tablet. We need to understand that. That's, that's the important point I'm bringing here. In Ezekiel also, there's the point God is bringing in. God gave the dimensions, even what is the material Moses should use. And this is exactly the size of a tabernacle. You see the bottom is a football field. So you get an idea what will be the size compared to a football field. We all know the size of a football field and this is a tabernacle size. Now, when David came into picture, the tabernacle was there. David built a palace for him and he suddenly thought, I'm living in a marvelous palace. Why should the Lord God and the Ark of the Covenant remain in a tabernacle? So David had an idea to build a temple. In Jerusalem, God said, no, your son Solomon will build it. And Solomon looked at this design and he built a temple of this size. Solomon's temple is this size. Who gave the design? Solomon. Who gave the design? God. Keep that in mind. This is what exactly is coming in Ezekiel. Now, when you come to the Solomon temple, that was destroyed as we read in Ezekiel. You remember that? Ezekiel gets the news and they come and tell him, Jerusalem is completely ransacked and the temple is gone. We saw that in Ezekiel chapter 33. 
it says very clearly it says that verse 21 he said Jerusalem is smitten and everything God said that what he is going to do he has done it this temple was gone then what we are going to look at is this next week I am going to link Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel together we have to study then we will understand what God is trying to convey to Ezekiel he is talking about a dimension of a temple. This is the Ezekiel's temple dimension. Right? This is given by God. Tabernacle is given by God. Keep that in mind. Looking at what is God has given, Solomon built a temple. God gave this design. And the second temple was built this size. It was smaller to start with, only literally little more than 50%. Herod came and made it bigger. This is the temple in which Jesus was visiting. This is the second temple. Now you get an idea? Tabernacle, Solomon's temple, time in the time of Jesus' temple, the second one. And we are looking at this temple. We are going to look at it. Why God is given the design of this temple? What is it supposed to be? What is the message it is conveying to us? That's what we're going to look at it. We'll be seeing this kind of pictures in the coming weeks also, so that I want to explain with the pictures. It's much easier to understand when you look at a picture. Now, today's study is, we have already studied the boundary wall. You know, it is 750 feet. It's a square. This is the outer court. We have studied it. And there are chambers all around where Levites will be living there. Now, this is the inner court. This is the holiest of holy. The, uh, it comes right inside this. Now, we are going to study this section. There is a three-story building here. There is a three-story building. And this is a section. Chapter 42 talks about this. This is the northern gate. This is the southern gate. This is a section. He'll talk about this section first. Then he'll talk about this section. These are three-story buildings. That's what we're going to see. With this chapter 42, the design is completed. In chapter 43, it says God enters through the eastern gate. This is the eastern, uh, this is the eastern gate. Sorry. This is the eastern gate. God's glory of God. Ezekiel always uses the word glory of God. He enters through the eastern gate. Next week, I'm going to touch upon one more point. The gate height is exactly high, almost 90 to 100 feet high. Have you seen that? We need to link that why it is so high. We can understand it when we are going to read again. This is next week I'm telling you, so we must understand as God enters through that. What was the vision of Ezekiel? He saw the vision. We have read it from chapter 2 onwards already. We have completed it. We will go back next week to chap those chapters and look what exactly exists. Are. He sees the whales touching the ground. And he sees the glory of God. If you notice that, you need a gate like this for that. So the idea is very clear cut. And... He comes with the cherubs. What do the cherubs do? They all the time say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, 24 hours without stopping. Right? What's the message God gives? Wherever he enters, he enters with the worship and praise. God is telling, you want to enter the temple, you can't do so without, if you don't want to worship and praise me, don't come near me. That's this kind of message is coming. We are going, we will go over and over again, understanding the temple and the size also we will see. Okay, having said that, let us now get into chapter 42, where he is going to describe these portions are three-story buildings for the priest. Let's, let us get on to chapter 42 and let us read verse 2. Verse 2 
says here, along the length, which was 100 cubits, I told you the cubits is, you can, it, uh, 18 inches, you can multiply by one and a half times, 150 feet was the northern door. The width was 50 cubits, 700 feet. Uh, roughly, you multiply by 1.5. Verse 3, please. Opposite the 20 cubits, which belong to the inner court, and opposite the pavement, which belonged to the outer court, was a gallery corresponding to the gallery in three stories. This is what the priest, I told you, the three story building, both the sides you will find one towards the north, one towards the south. Gallery corresponding to a gallery in three stories. It's a three story building for the priest, basically. Let's move on to verse four, please. Before the chambers was an inner walk, 10 cubits wide, a way of 100 cubits. And their openings were on the north. So to enter that, the priest has to enter. There's an opening. Through that, the only they can enter into this three-story building. And it says what is the size of it and all. This is very close to the temple now. Okay. I show you the picture where it is. Verse 5, please. That's more to us. Now the upper chambers. Now this is the three-story building. What he says is, Upper chambers were smaller because the galleries took more space away from them than the lower and middle chamber. Now, building is built. The bottom, what do you call it? In the US, we call it first floor. The bottom floor is a little bigger. Then the next floor is smaller. And the upper third one is a little smaller, like that, you know, the construction. Because they didn't have the support, he says, in the side. So the upper chambers were smaller because the galleries took more space away from them than the lower and middle ones in the building. Let's move on to verse 6, please. For they were in three stories and had no pillars. No, they did not have pillars to support. That is why the walls of each chamber is supporting each other. So they, in order to reduce the length, they do it. These days we do the pillar constru construction so that we can have the same size even if you go for multi-storied building. In the olden days, it was not like that. That is what it explains. They were in three stories and had no pillars like the pillars of the course. Therefore, the upper chambers were set back from the ground upward more than the lower and middle ones. So, you may understand very clearly. Smaller and smaller store floors as we go on the higher side. Let's move on to verse 7. As for the outer wall by the side of the chambers, toward the outer court facing the chamber, is length for 50 cubits, 75 feet long. There was a wall, there was a wall covering these chambers. This is on the northern side, he explained. This is the same thing repeated for the southern side also. Verse 8, please. For the length of the chambers, which were in the outer court, was 50 cubits, that is 75 feet. Behold, the length of the space in the temple was 100 cubits. That is 150 feet. Temple is totally 500 cubits, you know, outer court. Remember that. It's a big, a big temple. Let's move on to verse 9. Below these chambers was the entrance on the east side as one enters from the outer court. So from the outer court, you can enter the chambers on the eastern side also. You can enter from the northern side, you can enter from the eastern side. This was the priest to come, you know. You see, if you look at the priest work, you need to go back to Moses' time, where he said very clearly, Aaronic priesthood, they divided also. Aaronic priests only, they are Levites, all of them are Levites. Levitical priesthood, out of it, he chose only Aaronic family. They will do only the sacrifice and offerings, the blood will be sprinkled and all. The other Levites, they will do the singing, praising, worshipping. They had many other things. And also the tabernacle, they will dismantle and carry it. And the Ark of the Covenant was carried on the shoulders of these people, the ladies. So there are different jobs given. We read it in, uh, it was given to Moses in Mount Sinai, all these things. In the Old Testament is there. So based on that only, this temple design is coming. Let's move on to verse 10. In the thickness of the wall of the court out toward the east, 
facing the separate area and facing the building, there were chambers. See, the chambers are given, as I mentioned to you, the chambers close to the inner court and the holiest of holies is for the priest to do the sacrifices. The chambers outside is for the other Levitical priests. So different things, they are differentiating right inside the temple itself. Verse 11, please. The way in front of them was like the appearance of the chambers which were in the north. According to the length, so was their width. All the edges were both according to the arrangement and the openings. Now this is when you come to the boundary wall, they are all sort of a square chambers. I showed you two weeks back if you remember that. So according to the length, they were all and the width and length were same. So many chambers were given. A lot of chambers were there all around. We have seen that. That's what is mentioned. The way in front of them was like the appearance of chambers. This is the inner chambers. It's like the outer chambers. Verse 12. Corresponding to the openings of the chambers. This is opening is the door. We call it the doorway. The opening. Some places there are doors. Some places there are no doors also. Corresponding to the openings of the chambers, which were toward the south. Now this is on the southern side. was an opening at the head of the way. The way in front of the wall toward the east as one enters. The so here again, entering is through the east. Now remember, next week we are going to see the glory of God enters to the eastern wall. I mentioned to you last time, remember? The Islamic people close the Jerusalem's eastern wall. <laughs> so so they, they're thinking that they can stop him from entering. They've forgotten the power of God. That's it. So it is toward the east as one enters them. Verse 13, please. Then he said to me, the north chambers on the south. See, I told you, one set of chambers on the north, one set in the south, where which are opposite the separate area, they are the holy chambers. Ah, you see, the three-story chambers are kept there, na? They are holy chambers, so God says. Because these are the people, Aaronic priests are there and they will do the sacrifice. See, one of the things God keeps on telling and is going to emphasize as we go a little further also, the entire area should be holy. Not only the, you know, the temple picture I showed you, not only that, he goes on to further, we are going to read that, surrounding outside the temple should be holy. Very clearly he mentioned that. And it's a very long distance. He gives that, uh, keep that whole area as a holy. So these are holy chambers where the priests who are near to the Lord, have you noticed? That is Aaronic priest, shall eat the most holy things. You remember that? When the sacrifice the most holy things, they will, must eat in the temple itself. So you need to connect this temple and what God told Moses for the tabernacle together, then we can understand it. There they shall lay the most holy things, the grain offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, and the place is holy. Now, pause for a moment. The offerings are mentioned here. The grain, the sin, and this thing. Why I am saying this? We are going to look at the New Testament concept where Paul said, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He mentioned that. We are going to look at that also in the days to come. Also, one more thing. Jesus paid it all. If Jesus paid it all, remember, Ezekiel is talking about all the sacrifices. Where in the New Testament, he says very clearly, Jesus paid it all. Once for all. We are going to see those verses in the New Testament. So with that only really we can understand this temple. Without that we cannot. And people have been struggling to explain why it is all these things. Ezekiel temple talks about animal sacrifice. You got it? Right. Let's go on to the next verse please. Verse 14. When the priest enter then they shall not go out into the outer court from the sanctuary without laying their garments. Now, 
pass parvam if you go back this is what god said the priest will have a certain garments when he, they come into my temple offer and you know the sprinkling of the blood and all and once a year he will go to the most holy place and come out only once a year they will go and at that time they will have a garment they will remove the garments and place it right in the temple because they are holy they will come out and wear their normal garment which they have it outside that's what it talks here verse 4 14 when the priest enter then they shall not go out into the outer court from the sanctuary without laying their garments in which they minister for they are holy they shall put on other garments then they shall approach that which is for the people you got the idea so there's a change of garment is exactly it is a priesthood mentioned to Moses for the tabernacle same thing is coming here so let us keep in mind because as we go further in the next chapter and all we are going to come back to this again and again we are going to discuss it because let us put one thing now clear going back right to the end when we talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ and he is ruling the earth if he's going to live in jerusalem he said my feet shall test the mount of olives he will stay in jerusalem for what to rule the world god has made us priest and kings two positions we are talking about the priest now in this temple but in the millennium christ will be the king keep this and we will get all these things put together unless we have the full context you will find it difficult to understand the temple of ezekiel so let's keep going on let's read verse 15 now when i had finished measuring the inner house he brought me out way of the gate which faced to the east now he comes out the east you know the eastern gate i should measure it all around now he's outside now he is measuring outside of the temple all around so that is what God says. No, God says, I don't want only the temple inside to be holy. I want even the outside to be holy. We need to understand what it means to us today as a believers in Jesus Christ. We'll be talking about it again. Not only inside, not only the holiest of holies should be holy. I want even the outside to be holy. So he's measuring the outside. He shows that. Okay. I want to go to verse 16, please. He measured on the each side, measuring read. 500 reeds. A reed is 8.8 .8 feet. 500 into 8.8 .8 or 9 if you take. How much does it come? 4,400 feet. The temple is 500 feet square. Outside of that is putting another square. 4,400 feet. What God is telling is not only inside the holiest of holies, not only the temple wall, I want outside also. Look at it from 500 feet to 4,400 or 500 feet. Nine times bigger. Uh, so much bigger. Everything should be holy. That's what it says. It has an implication for a believer today. Very important. We are going to look at it as we go on in the coming weeks. The meaning of the Ezekiel temple and what it is. Let's move on to the next verse, verse 17. He measured the north side, same thing. 500 reeds by the machine reed. So he had a two reeds. So remember, one loose tape and a reed. One is 1.5, the 18 inches, another is 8.8 .8 feet. Let's go to verse 18. On the south side, he measured 500 reeds with the machine reed. Again, a square, all the four sides. 500 reeds, 4,400. It is so big. Verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, verse 19. He turned around to the west side and measured 500 reeds with the measuring rod. West side. Let's move on to verse 20. That's the last verse in chapter 42. He measured it on the four sides. It had a wall around. Length of 500 and the width 500 divided between the holy and the profane. What God says is the final boundary wall is not the boundary wall of the temple. It is much beyond. That is holy. Outside the holy, 
is the profane, the world. Pass for a moment. We have to go back to Genesis to understand it. God created heaven and earth. He said everything is good. Created mankind on that. Disobedience came through the man and woman, first man and woman. With that came the world went into the influence of the powers of darkness. Which in Ezekiel we have seen the last verse, the profane entered it. In that profane which fills the whole earth, God is putting a temple. In the city he chose Jerusalem. In the place he chose Moriah. And he says this should be the temple. There he says a small portion, holiest of holies. Around that is a temple. Around that is a compound wall, which is 500 feet we have seen. And around that he goes still further, nine times bigger, 4,400 feet. He says, this whole lot has to be holy place or holy district. You call it whatever it is. Outside that should be profane. We are going to take this concept. We will apply to the temple in the New Testament. Knowing not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We will do that later on. So today we have studied that. Having studied that, when it comes to chapter 43, God will say very clearly, he gives the reason why he is giving the design. Interesting, many people miss that. Never miss that what God says. God has said it, I am giving the design for this particular purpose. We will see that next week. And when we see that, we need to look at what God has already worked during that time. Let's go back, pause for a moment, go back to the our starting point. Ezekiel is in Mount is in a place called Cheber, a captive of the Babylonians. Remember that? In the chapter 1 itself, we have seen it. So we have been looking at it. Because of the sin of the Israelites, God said, I will disperse you. So we need to get back to the starting point itself. When he gave the promised land, they were living there. Tabernacle was there. And even Eli's time, you remember that Eli's time? When Samuel was coming and the Philistines came, they took the tabernacle and everything. Finally, the Ark of the Covenant was returned. You remember all the stories are there. We, we keep on reading it. Everything gets connected here completely. And then the kingdom is divided into two, northern and southern. Ten tribes in the north and two tribes, Judah, Benjamin in the south. Assyrians come. God brings Assyrians. And he removes the ten tribes. During that time, People of the all the ten tribes, those who wanted to follow the Lord God, ran down to the south. So the south people, primarily Judah, Benjamin, also had all the tribes. In a very small number. But the most of the ten tribes is not there. And today the word they are given is not a biblical term. Bible doesn't say that. But people normally call it as the lost tribes of Israel. They say we are finding here and there people in uh, northeast of India, they found out some people in Ethiopia and a few other places they are finding because they have the Jewish custom. They say, okay, this must be the those tribes, those tribes which are lost. Now, the southern kingdom was invaded by Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar came. So we read all those things. In the first lot, Daniel went. Remember that we are going to study there. We are going to bring Daniel also because he also prophesies about the temple. Daniel went. And then Ezekiel goes. Second law. We have seen that. That time God says, when he comes, you will lose your temple. And Ezekiel receives the news. We have studied that. Temple is burnt. At the same time, this is the most important thing. The most important thing. 100 years before that, Isaiah talked about Cyrus. Remember that. We are going to see that in the weeks to come. 100 years before that, Isaiah told Cyrus, a king, heathen king, 
not an Israel king. Cyrus. God said, I'll raise him up to build my temple. Isaiah said that. Then Jeremiah is in Jerusalem now. Jeremiah is looking at everything. What's happening? And Jeremiah says, 70 years you will face this captivity. He has given that time frame. God through Jeremiah gave that time frame. God through Isaiah gave the name of the king. Right? And God through Ezekiel has given the design of the temple. What more you need? That's what God says. As we go through chapter 43 and all, you're going to, this is the question God keeps asking. What more you need? I've given you everything. Can you not respond? We are going to see the response of the Israelite to the message of Ezekiel. That, you read that in Ezra and Nehemiah. Unless we link all these things, we, don't, we will not get the complete and full picture of this what God is speaking to us. So we are going to see that. So what happens is, God is telling the captive people of Israel who are outside. Look, I've already told you 70 years. My anger came on you because you left me and worshipped the idols. I'm giving you a time period of 70 years. Jeremiah prophesied. Count it. And I will not use any of you. The Lord God says, I'm the God of heaven and earth. I will use a heathen king. I will tell you his name. He gave the name Cyrus. The moment you see a man by that name Cyrus comes, your redemption draws nigh. You know, we talk about the signs of times. Exactly that's what God has given. Not only to us today. He has given to the people of uh, time of Ezekiel also the signs of times. You can see the signs. You will know exactly what is going to happen when. Wait for that name Cyrus. The moment it comes, get ready. Get ready for what? He has talked to Ezekiel. There is no temple. You need to go and build the temple. We are going to see from Ezra, Nehemiah, the response of the Israelites. You know what it is? The response was lukewarm. That's the word we can use. Revelation, he says, no, I see you as a lukewarm. Exactly we are going to see. If you put the numbers together, you will get really surprised. What are the numbers we are going to see? Number one. How many of the Israelites are outside the promised land of Israel? Like Ezekiel or like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they are all outside. When the freedom is given, when they are told, go back, not only just go back, go and build the temple to the Lord God of heaven. That is what the heathen king has given. We are going to read that. Think about it. I want you to think on all these things. How many of the people who are outside, who have been crying all the time, Oh Lord, you have punished that, you have punished that. How many of them responded and went back? The number is given. Ezra gives the number. We are going to see that. Then, God has given the design also. We will see all these things to understand. The mind of a man. God is pleading with us again and again. It's the same story in Old Testament. It's the same story in New Testament. And we'll take this whole temple. We'll take the whole concept. And apply it to our lives as believers. Remember, the way we apply is. Always keep in mind. The holy, holiest of holies. Only center place. Once a year the priest will go. That's a holy place. Ark of the Covenant is kept there. Right? Then comes the holy place, then the outer court. Inner court, outer court, everything we know. Then in this temple, it went a little beyond that. There's an outer wall, 500 feet. And it went one more step beyond. That we need to understand. 
a district complete 4,400 feet, God said, nothing anomaly should come, nothing profane should enter into this. What does it mean? God is giving us a message in all clarity. We need to understand that. That's very important. So we are going to link up all this. Since I, I thrown up a lot of points as we go on to the next week and a few other times as we look at it, we are going to see that. When you come to chapter 43, we are seeing the glory of the Lord enters. So we'll go back to Ezekiel chapter 2 and I'll see what the glory I mentioned to you about the gift. Then we are going to see the reason why God gave the design. That also we are going to see. And we'll see the application for our life. And in the end, we will also going to talk about the return of Jesus, second coming, but that's what many people link it up to this quite a lot of time. And see what Jesus does in the millennial rule and what is our responsibility. Remember chapters 4 and 5 in Revelation. What did they say? You made us priests, you made us kings. Priest stands between man and God. King is for ruling. God has called us for both. That is what exactly we are going to see. Christ doing that. Priestly function and kingly function. So having said that, one of the things which really worried about this, let me bring it to you as we come to the close. People were worried why there is an animal sacrifice in this temple, if it is a millennial temple. You get the question? If this is a millennial temple, will there be animal sacrifice? After Christ died and rose again? Is it necessary? Big question mark is coming on that. So we are going to stop at this point. You can think of it, all these things. We are going to discuss it as we go on. And then we will come to the final conclusion. As Ezekiel is written, we are going to stick to what is written by Ezekiel. Ezekiel himself says why the design is given. So with that, we will go and we will link it up. Finally, beyond Ezekiel, we will also go even to other parts of the Bible to know about the millennium rule because that link has to be done. So having said that, let me stop at this point. As on today, we are completed up to chapter 42. Feel free to give your comments for a few more minutes left out before we go for prayer. And any questions also feel free to ask. Time is open for all of you.